presentation. Um, but the topic comes up a lot because all of you are initiating things and projects that require a lot of change. And approaching that change and implementing the change is what helps increase the likelihood of success, um, the timeliness of a project, and just helps ensure that your entire team is on board, which, which we all want. So I thought I'd start with uh, some quotes that seem to be coming off the page. But a couple that, that I liked the best, the first one, the world hates change, yet it's the only thing that's brought progress. And then the last one I liked a lot as well, which is change is hard because people overestimate the value of what they have. Um, and they don't know, you know what's on the horizon. So I think it's bringing that awareness to the fact that there is something better on the other end uh, is, is half the battle. So looking at change and how we approach change at PartSource, it became really important to our clients to ensure that we have the infrastructure to support that change, you know, to help with implementations. That's a big part of my team's job. And a piece of that is the change management. So we created the infrastructure within our department um, with the three pillars that you see up there. So we understand that the approach was, was really, really important. And these three pillars that we have within the department are what really help facilitate that success. So the first being our program management team, which is a team of, of project managers who's run by Will Kinsey, who's here today. Um, the second is our technical integrations and workflow engineering. So looking at how are our customers procuring parts today? Is that the best method? Can we insert integrations or ePartsFinder finder configurations in order to make it better? But looking at current state and then defining what future state should look like is that, that second pillar. And then the third is the training. So not necessarily training on how to utilize ePartsFinder, finder, but how the new procurement process is going to work. And then the ongoing support thereafter is what that third pillar is really um, there to, to serve. So the approach that we take, I'm trying to keep it, you know, keeping it very simple, is these four, these four steps. So defining and communicating the goals and object objectives, pretty simple. Including the team and change management. Um, Nadia and Mara brought that up today. We've seen that with a lot of our clients who have had a lot of great success. Including the team and the change management initiatives and the planning. Number three, reinforcing the goals and objectives and the success, success factors throughout the duration of the project is really important. Uh, and then lastly, reporting on the progress of the initiatives and celebrating your wins. So diving into that process, you know, we looked at the first one, which is defining the success and communicating the objectives. So first and foremost, an issue has come up or an opportunity has come up, and you as leadership have decided that you're going to do something about it. So I need to implement a change. Once that decision is made, you know, defining what the goals are are extremely important. So the SMART goals, I think we all know what a SMART goal is, but it should be specific, measurable, attainable, and there should be, it should be time bound. There should be a target date associated with it. So some examples of that, we've seen one organization that wanted to reduce their current, current procurement time of 78 minutes um, to ensure that they could free up capacity, you know, to scale, like Genevieve had mentioned. Um, as they bring on new opportunities and new responsibilities. And then a second uh, SMART goal that one of our clients had was to reduce their part spend on um, some specific OEMs by 10%. So specific, uh, that one was by end of year, it was measurable, uh, and it was time bound. The second is to communicate the opportunity and the approach. So I put it in this order on who to communicate to um, for a specific reason. We find it's most beneficial not only in projects that we're working on internally at PartSource, but what we suggest to our clients on how to approach the change is to communicate to leadership first. So talking to your boss about whatever it is that you've decided to take on, what is your objective, what is your goal, at a high level, here is what I'm going to do. And then communicating it to middle management. Um, that's probably your uh, clinical engineering managers, it might be team leads, but then it trickling down to the middle management level and you're gaining your buy-in from top you know, to bottom. And then it's, it's communicating to the remaining stakeholders. And where we saw great success with, it, with, with this was with Nadia and Mara. I thought you guys had a great approach. Um, and we always suggest the same approach to our clients, but it's gaining buy-in from top to bottom. 
So including the team members in the planning. So you've identified that there's an issue or an opportunity, and now you've, at a high level, probably understand what the approach is gonna be. But it's important to include the team. One, it creates a, a smoother transition. Um, you get buy-in from your naysayers, but it's really important to include all of your stakeholders. So one, including all of your stakeholders, you wanna ensure you include everybody. Um, you know, we had an instance with one client where they forgot to involve supply chain and there was some, um, you know, there was a holdup there with contract negotiations and redlining. They needed to see it and they needed to have buy-in and they were introduced a little later than they should have been. So understanding who all of your stakeholders are, really important. Um, identify your naysayers. So if there are people in the room, Genevieve mentioned the people, you know, the two people on the boat, who are those people and make sure they're included because when people feel like they're part of the change, they're less likely to resist it. The second is creating a project lead. And this can be done in a few different ways. I've seen some create a naysayer as a project lead, but typically what we see and what we do at our organization is make the project lead somebody who has a lot of potential, somebody who has good and fresh ideas and giving them the opportunity to shine and to take that project on under your leadership. And then the third is identifying the project team as a whole. So, Identifying the approach that ensures success would be the second thing. So as you're planning with the team, what's the best process and approach to take on? You know, we always caution our customers to launch right into a project, and we do internally as well. If there's an objective and there's a goal, don't try to accomplish it all in one swoop. So t taking a phased approach is usually really appropriate. So we saw really great success with Piedmont, for example, in doing this. So Piedmont came on and we have a um, managed spend uh, program with them. So what we did in the first phase was we implemented purchasing three parts finder. Very simple, very straightforward. In the second phase, we then implemented the integration and the punch out with PeopleSoft um, and, and then with, with EDI as the third. So taking it in a phase approach and taking small bites, you know, making the smallest change that can have the greatest impact um, to begin. That way people see success, you celebrate those successes and each, each step thereafter is that much easier. Um, the last one would be creating a, a project charter. So it's really important to document all of these things. So what we find is really valuable is to ask the customer and make sure the customer thinks about what are the objectives, what are the goals, and documenting what the milestones are, what the, uh, you know, what the, the SMART goal is, and what that, that, that deadline is associated with all of them. It's just really healthy to have that all documented. So one, it's really thought out and methodical, and two, it's something you can revisit once you're full, you know, fully along with the project, and it just helps it keep it fresh in your mind what the original objectives and the goals are. Reinforcing the objectives and the success factor. So that's what I mentioned on the on the project charter, but making sure that you remind your team on what is the overall objective. So throughout the project, throughout the planning, making sure that you remind everybody this was the goal, this was the objective, and everyone understands what problem you're trying to solve, and that it's constantly reminded. You know, I heard, uh, again, Nadia Mara mentioned that they have regularly, regularly scheduled meetings. We do the same internally when we make a change inside our building, when we make a change with a customer and we're doing an implementation. The way we approach it is post-change, we have weekly meetings, we have monthly meetings, and we have quarterly meetings. And those progress based on the adoption of the change. So we start with weekly, and there's a meeting every single week and a call every single week with our clients until we feel like the project is stable, meaning that we're seeing adoption to that change. Then we move to monthly once we feel comfortable with the adoption that we've seen. And then after monthly, we move to quarterly thereafter. And it's just monitoring, again, all of the objectives, reminding yourself of what that goal was, are we achieving that goal, and, and again, just making sure that you're, you're doing that on a frequent basis. The last one is tracking and reporting on the progress of the goals and objectives. And doing that you know, on the weekly, monthly, quarterly basis, but making sure that not only are you communicating it to the project team, but you're also marketing yourself to leadership. So you're taking that success and, and you ensure to show your boss, your, or handing your boss something and your boss's boss, the success of what that project was. So in those weekly, monthly, quarterly meetings, one, getting the information so that you can report back to the organization and all of the stakeholders, but two, really identifying and being prescriptive with what's working and what's not working. And those frequent meetings, those consistent meetings really help foster that. 
So looking at the areas of improvement and then celebrating the success. It's really important to celebrate success because it helps everyone stay motivated. When you start to cross those tasks off the list and you start to see some, some positive momentum, celebrating that will help accelerate the rest of the change. So the way that we approach it, and I talked about our department, but when we're doing an implementation with a specific customer, we'll basically take three, three steps to the approach. So the first would be, and we talked about it during one of the learning labs today, was uh, looking at the workflow. So doing a workflow consultation with the client. What does current state procurement look like? And then we go back to home base and we look at where we can inter insert our technology, where we might insert in integration, maybe it's just EDI, to create the best future state procurement process that results in the, in the you know, greatest capacity increase. So the first is the workflow and the technology assessment. The second is the onboarding implementation. So once we've defined what future state should look like, uh, whether it's the procurement process and or program along with it, we're then doing configuration training and change management support. So all of the things that I've said previously, we help guide our customers uh, through that change and help them you know, understand what best practices are so you have a smooth implementation. But that's part of the service that, that my, team, um, my team provides. So we assign a program manager that helps support all of these things, track the progress, provide reporting, and then we do the configuration and the training. And again, the training is a word that we're using loosely. It's really to go on site and help everyone understand what the change is that we're implementing and how it's imp why it's important to them. So we include leadership in that communication of that goal and that future state. And then we stay on site and we're available at home base for ongoing support. Um, and that, that leads into the last piece, which is the monitoring and support. So we're there, there, we're there after the implementation. So once the implementation's complete, we're constantly monitoring internally how the program is running, continually providing reporting to our customer on how everything is running, and constantly bringing back up what those goals and objectives are, and making sure that we're reporting to you on whether or not we're still meeting or exceeding those. Those are all really important pieces of it to ensure you don't lose sight of the goal or the objective. And this is really where you know, I, I welcome you know, your, your feedback or your requests on uh, involving my team. If this is something that you're interested in, uh, you know, working with my team, having them do a uh, consultation on your workflow, um, where you might be able to create some efficiency in procurement, uh, we would do that at, at no additional cost for the customers in this room uh, to come on site, do that assessment, and help give you some ideas on how we might be able to support in a more efficient procurement process. So if you are interested, feel free to see me or Will Kinsey. We'll be here today and tomorrow. Uh, but hopefully this provided some insight on how we approach change uh, to help you support in some of the initiatives that you might have within your organization. Any questions? Is that part of the subscription service? So it is part of the subscription service. We do provide the consultation without a subscription. So if there's interest in just doing this consultation to see what does that look like? What does a future state procurement process look like? We would be willing to do that on site. What we do is we come on site, it's about a half a day. Um, we just spend some time with the technicians, look at how they're procuring parts today, and then we'll report back to you. Here are some areas of opportunity that we see to make for a more efficient procurement process. To put it in perspective, uh, you know, at, at Alina, we were able to take from 78-minute uh, procurement time uh, down to, yeah, so we, we ended up taking it down to, I believe it was 14, there you go, 35%. Uh, another example would be with Trinity. So with Trinity Health, we were able to take their procurement time, which we estimated at 72 minutes, down to actually 90 seconds. That one was a really whiz bang one just because they were doing a loss and punch out. We're doing EDI and multiple different functions. Um, but that is probably the best, the best case scenario, which is, which is great and it's very likely at other organizations. Uh, but again, that's something that we can do for free, uh, no strings attached. We do the consultation, we report back to you what we think a future state would look like. And that might be wrappered um, with a, uh, a spend management program, um, Park Source Pro or subscription program. If, you, if you've already done that, someone can tell me that you've done it already.
Correct. Okay. Yep. If we've already done it with, with your organization, we can definitely let you know. If it's been a while, we can do a fresh assessment, um, and we'd be happy to do that. Okay. 